Web design and development businesses require a long list of tech solutions to run your daily operations and execute services. As you start to sign up and purchase all the tools, software, and third-party systems, how do you figure out what is best for your processes, clients, and services? It all begins with having a solid understanding of your services and day-to-day -day business tasks. Website builds are the most common service along with the day-to-day -day business task of converting your leads to clients, communicating with current clients, and billing. In the document for this lesson, there's a list of common tech needs for a typical web design and development business. Edit and add to this list by mapping out repetitive day-to-day -day or project-specific processes that could benefit from a specific set of technologies working together. Many of these needs will be broken down in future lessons. For now, just think about this from a high-level view and what is needed for your business operations. Begin with the most crucial of all techs, your business computer. Not only will you need plenty of hard drive storage, but also cloud storage. You will also need a webcam and a microphone for virtual client calls, an extra monitor if you code or design, as well as a solid Wi-Fi solution with a backup option for when that Wi-Fi goes out. Next, there's the important matter of how you will be paid. Invoicing and banking. Set up a separate business banking account in the merchant solution for how you will take credit card and ACH payments. You need invoicing software that will follow up automatically for notices and failed payments, along with a way to pay yourself payroll. Lastly, if you're not outsourcing your accounting, you'll need to have a solution that will help prevent tax season from becoming a nightmare. Then there's your digital storefront, your business website, and admin essentials. You need your website to show clients what you do, a domain, and reliable hosting. For all your admin tasks, you need your task management software, time tracking, document creation, and how you will present proposals. Then you'll want your social media accounts to promote your brand and add legitimacy to your online presence. Lastly, there's everything you need to provide your services. Whether it's design software, coding apps, analytics, or reporting, it all requires specific tech. This last bucket involves a lot of technical needs, which we'll review in depth in upcoming lessons. Now, before we move into more specifics of these different tech stacks in the next lesson, we must address an elephant in the room, shiny object syndrome. Shiny object syndrome is when you become quickly distracted by something new and current. This means you're choosing the latest product, which results in you dropping your current solution. Pivoting to a better tool because it offers more features is a wise decision, but shifting from solution to solution without a thorough evaluation of your current needs can cost you a lot of money and a lot of time. Being aware of the sales tactics of these solutions, you may be able to avoid shiny object syndrome. Keep in mind these three tactics and ways to avoid them. First, a massive limited time sale or lifetime deals. This is a tactic from new products to gain a lot of capital at the outset. It may seem like a little investment initially, however, you need to factor in all the time to learn the new tool and import your process into that framework. Secondly, new products that combine solutions in one large massive tool. Large, massive solutions can be tempting, but a tool that is trying to provide an overwhelming number of features could quickly be unable to support them all, grow them, or improve them. Lastly, freemium models. It can be alluring to shift to the latest free solution, and yet we know that a business needs revenue to pay its employees, its coders, and its support team. If the freemium model is not set up well, you could be spending all your time setting up your tech stack and process with a solution that will be unsupported in a few years or eventually eliminate that free tier for a high ticket price. Many software and system providers have freemium models and pricing changes all the time. Pricing should be a factor in the evaluation of the tool, but don't make it the deciding factor. Companies fall under new leadership all the time, and prices only go one direction. If there is a solution that is a lot cheaper than its competitors, be careful, as it could be that way to get a lot of new users initially, and then it will raise its prices to be the same as others. As we finish reviewing the basic needs for your business, let's briefly talk about how to pay for them. 
Since business tools fall under the price of doing business, it's wise to budget for your tools with recurring revenue. Use the amount of your admin costs and tech stack for your business needs to set the goal of how much recurring revenue you need in your business. If your tech stacks require monthly, yearly, or large upfront costs, budget that total amount and look for ways to cover the entire costs with productized services like website care plans. If you need a budget of $200 a month for all the technologies used in your tech stacks, aim to get four clients paying $50 a month for ongoing website maintenance and your entire expenses are covered. This way, you can afford to select the right tools for your business needs without struggling to find free solutions or doing more work manually day to day. Using recurring revenue to help budget tech needs for your business will allow you to spend less time switching solutions for cost and focus your time on the right things, like improving processes and business growth.